just a second guys um, I gotta start everything up and then we can go Uh, yeah, the music, uh, it's just a playlist, I've been circling to, to just some kind of relaxing game, music from video games, um, or mixes based on them, so, it's nothing uh, special. Alright, so, let's see, that's what we need, yeah, that's exactly what we need. I'm just gonna minimize this window here, make it, make it somewhere out here. I'm just arranging stuff, so don't worry. So what are we going to do today? Well, today we are going to create, uh, we're gonna start creating. Uh, God knows we won't be able to finish it. Uh, just a simple or you know those uh, video games where where you gotta mine stuff and uh, and you got crafting systems. Almost every game by now has those. So today we're going to be focused on one of those. Uh, and I think we'll be pr uh, pretty, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to finish those to, uh, today with the, um, with the sculpting, I mean. All right, so, cool, now we should finally be ready. Uh, but if we do not, we can do it uh, next week or something like this. So what I decided to do is to start from uh, from whatever it, where it was, from this project here, Polysphere 3D, um, because it's just giving me a sphere that has uh, no subdivisions. I added some, or I think it has some, but we'll see. So I'm going to leave the lower. Uh, I simply don't need them, and uh, I'm just going to start. And I'm not going to talk too much on this stream, but you guys, uh, it's nothing. It's nothing uh, too. Uh, choose hard so I don't think you guys need to for me to walk you through this what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create a nice kind of kind of um, a, rock, a base for the rock this something that the player can see uh, in the world and just instantly recognize it from the rest of the environment. Right, uh, and let's just dynamesh it right off the start. That's way too much dynamesh. There we go, it should be more than enough. And uh, one of the major brushes we'll be using are the Trim Dynamic. And we're gonna use uh, a lot of Damien Standard. We're gonna use some uh, age polish and clay, clay tubes, but we can start with this one. We don't need this to be such right. Hmm. Interesting.
Yes, it is pretty low resolution so far, but right now I just want a nice form. I don't need any uh, any big details. So. Boom. I'm basically trying to get rid of all the round shapes wherever I see one because um, it has it, it it has its round parts but not like this. Um, so a, a lot of the things, a lot of the time, I'm holding, uh, I'm using a brush in Z7 Z8 by holding out. So like for dynamic sub, uh, for uh, trim dynamic, I hold. Um, I hold old and that that gives me something uh, that raises and then I'm I just go back to the regular and right about now I'm just gonna slice it one more time and right about now we can Let's bring a little here and all right. So now we can just uh, make it to 64. Dynamite shade again, dynamite shade at high resolution, and then fix those. There we go. Yes, um, those brushes here are not mine. I use their error free on Gumroad. It's called Orb Brushes or something. And I use a lot of them for polishing. Uh, like this, but when it's a bigger better resolution, like this, you can see how it gets you kind of a nice tone effect. And this is something you can do on your own. <coughs> Without, without this brush set, but it's just um, faster for me. Right now, I can. What I can do is I can add um, a primitive, like a cube. Yeah, like a cube here and split mass points rotate it and move it into position something like this if I want to and I'm going to dynamash and clip it there we go And just you know create some part of it some new form Right now I can put it in a little bit like this, give it a little bit of a rotation, right? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a couple of those, holding control, rotate them in a different way. and one more let's do one on this 
Okay, now I'm gonna push. All right, and let's data mesh again, and I'm gonna make sure it um, doesn't retain any of its. Whoa. Cool, and now I can merge those down if I want to. And this is how I'll create the nuggets of the pieces that are going to be uh, actually done. Hello, Sarah Dragons. Nice name. Thank you for watching, my friend. Thank you for being part of the stream. How are you doing today? So, uh, as I was saying, I can now uh, merge it down. And I can dynamite it again. And now I just get a bit of a variation. And I'm going to, of course, um, make it one polygroup and then just with trim dynamic, I'm going to create a whole new part of this. Like this. And this is just making pieces, uh, just giving a little bit of a variation. Yes, yes, the clay build-up brush. There you go. Clay build-up is good enough, but I don't like the... And it is actually good if you're making this, if you want to make some kind of a, a nugget that is actually going to be there. And if you want it all to be one piece, you can very well do this. So if you want to have like a gold ore or gold nugget uh, protruding from here. And if you want this to be like one sculptable part, all you got all you can do is like create it something like this and then with um, with something like them standard you can create a, a little bit of a you know area that uh, that defines it like this however uh, and you got to do this on a uh, larger resolution of course however I don't aim for that so uh, I'm going to go and uh, use my clay tubes to just uh, and the brushes that I showed you guys the trim dynamic the edge polish uh, and the clay and of course move to kind of get what I what I want All right Hello Megan Animations, nice to see you again. Go. And you can start, you know, defining a little bit of shapes. Uh, you can use the, uh, where was it, slash? How was the slash uh, S? Well, so clear slash. Perhaps it's in the dynamo. I haven't used it in a lot, so... Hmm. Oh, slash 3, okay. I thought it was in the uh, in the light box now. But, and you can start using those to kind of define the very base uh, shapes of your... of your ore, where you want the major cracks to be later on. While still being... Uh, on a really, really low resolution. So we go. Let's create this one here. Cool. Well, this will be kind of like uh, you're asking for. Oh, I get you. No, I haven't started in. I started this. Just now, like three minutes before you show up, but um, I would, I wouldn't uh, go and do it uh, inside Maya. Like, if you watch the videos on my channel, most of the times I start in Maya and get a very uh, basic 
white box shape and then I bring it here and do the, the majority of the work here but no this one will be done entirely I want it done in the Vitaly and ZBrush and then just, uh, just scale it up in either uh, the engine or in Maya uh, let's use BCL BCL and I'm gonna use it with the clay brush and I'm gonna use it with Alpha 28 and this gives it a little bit of a kind of a you know the alpha breaks the lines so it gives you some break lines which is nice right Yes, right now I'm streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and WatchMeWork.com, which um, which has right now three streamers. So myself, a guy named 3 Me that I haven't seen his work, but it looks really cool. Uh, he's doing some kind of a head right now, uh, and then I, a guy who is Photoshop. So yeah, this is what you want. All right, so now we can another technique you can do is you can of course mask something and then you can just bring it up rotate it the way you want bring it up like this with dynamesh it and now we have this little part here so let's fix this there you go and now you can polish it a little bit whoa you can do edge polish. Uh, there was a brush set here. Let me see where it was. A brush set. Um, was it inside the trim? Yeah, those are like trim mark, and there are different trims. But no, I was looking for. Uh, let me see. Slide scale smooth planer. Yeah, the planer brush, and those can give you some unexpected results. So like line cut if you do something like this uh, I don't actually know how the art works but I guess if you draw a line if you draw a line I don't know this one I don't know I gotta still see but there were some brushes here that can create kind of cracks oh there you go something like this you can just go and create a kind of this and it automatically generates it which um, right now isn't that much impressive, but on, but on a higher, there you go, you get some uh, some variation in the form. And if you go on a higher resolution, so if this was like like this, it's getting to be much uh, much sharper. And at and at uh, some point, you can use it in hard surfaces as well if you're sculpting something. Uh, I'm gonna leave it like this. And then I'm gonna delete lower and redone the mesh. All right, so we still got some nice pieces of it. All right, let's get back to our basic brushes here and uh, continue creating this uh, piece. Since I want to be more stylized, this is why I'm doing such uh, broad shapes like this, and then here.
right? And I think we're getting close to the point that we can up the resolution once again. I just want to make uh, some nice cut here. And I'm gonna, I will want to see my base a little bit more of a plain form. This one looks good. There we go. Right? And let's up it once again to like this. Go. And probably I will it once uh, once more before I start doing details. Uh, but not, right now I'm just like turntabling this and uh, looking for a place where it needs more of a more of a volume. I just don't want to go and start creating uh, patterns and uh, cracks just yet because if I'm at uh, too much of a resolution. It's gonna start. Why are you? Oh, shit. Let's save this. This is a good reminder. Um, so, no, save it like right here. Why not? Right? And um, what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So, if you start creating. Um, If you start creating uh, kind of details on a, a kind of volume, if you decide to change the volume rather uh, on a very high resolution, you are most certainly to get kind of a wonky detail, kind of a yeah wonky and wobbly stuff. And uh, like eight out of ten times you won't like this. So. We're just finding finding planes here uh, and lines that later we can we can start uh, What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mask this and whoops and bring it up a little bit like this and then when I would done my shit I can use this as a whole new kind of a uh, plane to work with here like this and then And then let's bevel it because it's not necessary but as a thumb rule when you do stylized things beveled is always better and chamfer so if this was something really big it would be a really good idea to uh, kind of chamfer it even if a cube uh, let's let's switch this so even if you go and create a cube here what and this is what I mean so come on there you go 
if I have this one and I make call my 3D and I can and I taper it so where is taper like this and then like this oh this shape maybe not this much but something like this shape would read much better in a in a over the top game or in a stylized kind of environment then especially for something like uh, like the mob MOBA games uh, when it's tapered from the top when you see it like this it looks uh, much much better than if it's just straight lines so this is why I apply this uh, kind of a general rule of thumb to a much uh, smaller level Oops. To much smaller level when it comes to those here right uh, to those edges so I want I want strong beveled edges that that the player can uh, clearly see throughout the, from a distance this is why I'm gonna use my Damien standard with old and just do some like this and then I'm gonna fill it with clay, redynamize it, and polish it with edge polish from this side and from this side, and now a little bit from here. And I get this kind of breaking. Hello James, I haven't seen you in a week or two, my friend. I mean, in the chat, I've never seen you otherwise. Let's see, what's happening with the gun? Oh, Friday, you'll see, I did a little bit of work on it offline. I know I said I'll do it on the stream, but I decided to, uh, to re-implement the idea with the uh, with the table leg serving as the gun pump which uh, I thought it was pretty uh, pretty stupid and then I thought it was not and then last Friday on the stream I thought it was pretty stupid again so I removed it and I created some kind of a real not real but more like a, more like a real life what a, what a real life shotgun would have but then I decided that uh, since we're doing something is powered by fallout we gotta be a little bit of a derpy and create it uh, create derpier form so I re, uh, re reinvented it to say off stream and you'll see this is basically the only thing I did off stream because otherwise it would be uh, taken almost a whole stream because it's not easy to implement the leg the table leg to work well with um, with all the springs and all the other faces uh, actually there you go so now I'm going to create something like this with the clay tube with the clay builder this is good and I'm gonna make it once again to retain the full taper form I'm gonna make the bottom part a little bit further away like this there we go and let's dynamash it and then create well ETD my friend go and create um, let's type things here But right now I'm starting to think uh, where I want the crystals because I, I had the idea to not just be some kind of rocks inside this rock but some kind of a crystal like diamonds or kind of something magical uh, to pop out of this and this is when I'm going to uh, this right now is where I'm starting to think where they will come so I want one from here and probably one from this point here 
so I can um, I can actually make this one I'm gonna rotate it push it down there we go cool and I'm gonna inflate this just so because we still don't have too much resolution and I don't want any uh, kind of a weird uh, weird errors getting when we're dynamash it like uh, cutting and stuff like this so I'm just gonna make it yeah I'm just gonna make it easier for ZBrush. ZBrush is pretty powerful but you still gotta help it sometimes uh, not here here is something that it holds no power on its own and it's, this is basically a what for how much polygon set I was it was like 45,000 polygon which uh, which compared to a character model that has like a 80 million million polygons on it it's still nothing so right we'll put one there we'll put one there and we'll put one there so let's just bring a little bit of a hole to indicate this I think too much and then I'm gonna go with clay buildup and just put some kind of a you know noise around it there we go that's good and this one I want from the very top of it a single shard will be magnificent and pointing out so this one here we gotta fix oh yes I'm using the very basic uh, settings for my brushes right now usually but if you want to change them I would not advise to change here something too drastic uh, what what is better for you to do is to just go and uh, select the brush and uh, call clone it so okay let's clone this and I will have trim dynamic one and I can do uh, other modifiers to it uh, I can change whatever I want but I won't lose and I won't have to reset my brushes but before that I will want to save this brush and all of the pain in the ass can be avoided so yeah planar brush uh, well the planar brushes are the real planar brush right here is it gives you a plane um, but it's kind of a you know you start here and I've never been able to kind of work fully uh, to be to feel perfectly comfortable with those brushes but for something like this, they can be very useful. I just don't have a different approach. But otherwise, you can see how they can create your kind of rock planes almost immediately. Uh, I just haven't utilized them. Perhaps, almost certainly, uh, my mistake that I'll have to fix. But for now, I am conf uh, I am happy to work with the brush I feel that I can work with without having to. Right. So let's start. Let's create the shards. So the shards should be fairly easy to do. Um, let's go to a cube. There we go. Let's initialize this. Oh, actually, let's make color match ready and let's initialize it to a cube cube right and I kind of well no big deal specify resolution of one and now let's put one here and one here so now we can get those polygons Right? Group by normals, press PG. 
Interesting. Um, Okay, you know what? Let's see. Um, okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna group by normals and I'm going to insert this one. And I'm gonna insert pod group island and insert region to about here. And I'm gonna isolate it, mask it, invert the mask, make it something like this, and then. Uh, and then I'm going to mask only this part here and see if this works. Okay. There you go. We can repeat this one. Right? And we can... Right now what we can do is, let's see... We can mirror them in the Y. There we go. Cool, cool. I don't really know why those uh, things don't behave the way I want them to. But I guess uh, we'll never find out. Okay, so let's. Again, let's divide them without subdivisions, without smoothing. Right, this should work. So I just applied them with um, with a uh, chamfer, like the Q grid sub uh, dynamics, and now I can dynamize them. I see. Okay, I can dynamize them a little bit lower, uh, bigger. You know what? I'm actually going to dynamize them like this. But one thing. Every slider in ZBrush has two ways to operate. You can go to resolution, which is very fast, or you can go to this kind of a pale blue thingy, uh, or orange if you are with the original um, uh, colors. And this way, it uh, it rotates much slower and allows much better tuning. So I'm going to go to about here, dynamize this, perfect. And I'm just gonna scope it since we're doing so much scoping um, by ourselves today. It's not gonna hurt. Let's do this one as well. There you go. Alright. So, something like this. And then I'm gonna. Make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to unify it. There we go.
right? Let's two matches like this. There we go. So for now, this will work. Uh, I just want them to be placed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it like this. Go to my brush here and create it. New. And now I have this as an insert mesh, which is pretty heavy for an insert mesh. And you will see what I mean. So uh, let's. There you go. So if I want to put one here and I start inserting it, I actually it insert pretty well. That should be pretty good. Okay. And now I can place it where I want to. There we go. And I can split my points to have it separate. And now I can start. This is what I meant. I can now start building it around, building my or uh, my like or uh, block or whatever around it so i can go to bcb my clay build up and i can build nice blocks like this and then trim dynamic it to look much nicer there you go oh this is just the high poly my friend um yeah, you can uh, you can uh, kind of create game resolution inside ZBrush like uh, with Decimation Master or the new thing, the Decimate, which will kind of need a little bit of a time to. Uh, did I create ZBrush? No, I didn't. But right now I created like nine poly. Uh, the Decimate, uh, I think. The higher, yeah, the higher it is, you can create something like this and then reproject it, you know, uh, or, or this, but for now I, uh, I'm pretty fine with, but I don't do this in ZBrush, I do almost none of the, unless I have to do it very quickly, like a, a while back ago I was doing, um, I was doing uh, one hour one hour assets which you can find on my playlist on my uh, youtube channel and then i used uh, then i used uh, decimation master for these things uh, simply because i um because i didn't have time i had myself a time limit to for one hour to finish it and put it into the engine uh, and uh, it would have not worked very well if I had to uh, retelpo it. And I'm not saying that it's bad to retelpo in ZBrush. Um, a lot of people do it. I just, especially for the final, for the very, very final, uh, for the very final object when you know you're working on a game and it's and the art director or the lead has decided that yes, this is the high poly. You should uh, put it into the game, and you have all the textures done. You will probably have to retexture it, especially if you're working on character. For something like this, you might get away, but for a character or something like that, you gotta you gotta be prepared to go and uh, just put the hours man into Topo Gun or Trady Coat or uh, Maya or Max or Moto or whatever rocks your boat. Man, I have a new keyboard and I keep hitting the Windows keys and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. A 
actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna. Two and now the final big one uh, that I wanna not final but I wanna have it uh, right away so I can uh, did I hit oh I hit the shizzle okay so I'm gonna put right above here whoa And each one of them will be kind of sculpted uh, individually as well. There we go. So I'll probably split them and as I told you, sculpt everyone individually, but for now it's going to work. Oh my god! Oh. Freaking, I wanted to say some R word, but I'll say freaking keyboard. Two. Let's put one more, and I'm not even gonna uh, put a new one. I'm just gonna get this one. Control Shift A, Control and A to mask it. Invert the mask to it to, uh, so it can be uh, unmasked. Hold Control and just move it. I'm gonna put one right here, and I want this to be really, really. Uh, kind of facing this thing. There you go. Cool. How to move? Uh, well, okay. So if you get this one, I'm. Um, hmm. Let's see. If we gonna hold hold control and move this one here, and then release the control and move our mouse it creates a kind of a duplicate special if this is what you are uh, asking so okay let's do it with a cube so you can guys see better so we have this cube right and i want to move it in this direction so what i can do is i can hold control start moving it well 
Okay. It's not a polymer. All right, so this way. Hold control. Uh, so I got this and I had to qu click uh, make polymer 3D. I keep grabbing the wrong cube here. But anyway, so what you can do is you get it in the position and you want to move it. So hold control, start moving it. And once you have the, um, the like, uh, the, di the distance you want each piece traveled, you release control, but you don't release your uh, pen or mouse and start moving it again and it will create this thing which is kind of a an array mesh but uh, it's not array mesh it's you know just duplicating those with equal spacing between them let's auto group those because i can't stand to watch those groups there you go now here we're gonna have a little bit of a and now I'm starting to do details not too much but I start to think about where the cracks and the crannies will be uh, on the on the ore so yeah what I can do now is, let's see, I can get this, import the mask, and use the move, just let's move it, no, we don't want it to move, and I can do something like this, there we go. I can do the same here. Cool. And now I can actually inflate the middle of this. There we go. Cool. And yeah, it's pretty tedious process, but um, well, what can you do, right? Right, and one more. I forgot about this one, so let's get this one, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna move it to whoa, hold control. There you go. Move it to kind of the place I want it to be, and rotate. Even this, uh, this kind of very, very rough uh, face, it starts looking like um, like what we want it to be.
texturing well today we are not gonna have a texture guys um, but well you might want to have this one done uh, have it like a hand painted texture it would seem it would be really good looking or something like this I think And even at this point I'm kind of changing as you can see the overall shapes of it of this lump of clay as it becomes like a like rock more and more uh, well I probably won't be able to finish it it's gonna be a short uh, stream I've been up for hour it probably I will probably be up for another uh, 15 to 20 minutes but I would be I'll try to make sure I show you the um, some detailing so basically From time to time, you can put on uh, different materials that that uh, because different materials, especially those matcaps here, have uh, some of them show some aspects of it better than are. So if I go to this, uh, what's it called, matcap green ring clay, I can see uh, better cavities and uh, where avian occlusion will kind of form, which gives me an idea when I paint it because I won't hand paint it I will go into um, into substance it gives me kind of a better idea where how I'm going to be able to play with my ambient occlusion there uh, so I think this is kind of helpful not kind of a lot of helpful I think to have this knowledge ooh that's so not what I imagine it would be and then you can go for um, not this one uh, you can go for flat color and you can see the outlines of it right now is there I think from every direction you can see it is uh, you can see it shards protruding and all those things so this means it won't be a it will be good when the player goes uh, to uh, when the player is in the world. This ob this object, its contours will be easily recognizable from the rest of the environment. There we go. Yes, yes, you're right, John. I am using uh, Trim Dynamic maybe more than it should be used for something like this, but I just love the brush.
All right. We could probably spot one more here. Yeah, let's do this. Come on. Now this to break the shapes and I'm gonna make it a little bit pointier. There we go. And even here. I'm just looking for it. There you go. That's what I want. Alright. So this one will go to the others. And I'm just gonna merge them. So now I have those created. Auto group it. And this one here, I can now up it one more in resolution. So let's go. Right? And from this point forward, I would probably start not caring about um, Dynamesh because. I'll make sure that when this is done, I will have all my basic shapes. Uh, when I'm done with this resolution, all my basic shapes will be in place. All right? There we go. That's good. All right, so now let's not start caring about. There we go, now we can actually get nice shapes for our um for our not nice shapes but nice clean edges for our planes like this and then now if we decide to go and Damien standard something some detail up like something like here like a crack it starts to actually catch the details on it because before that we were in very low resolution and we could have done nothing about it but now we can do this and yes yes this uh, this is good I think this is a good way to approach it because if you are making a game that has like a multiple object like this like you have crafting system in your game and you have mining as one of your skills or professions or whatever then you can use this and texture it differently especially for multiplayer games and then you will have uh, you'll have you know different uh, different models one model and different textures uh, or you can just like use this rock and then just uh, switch off those shards and create something different and then you have like a, uh, a different uh, idea. What I put on, how did I get the rake brush? I mean, like so much, not the time for rake brush. There you go. Well, let's bring this one. And I'm gonna work with clay build up now. Just because now I can get uh, those. Shapes. And if there is time to work with the clay buildup, it's now because later you will start getting your model all kind of wonky details. I don't need color. Get rid of me, color. There you go. Yes, you can apply uh, materials right now. So you can get this one and you can. Um, Get a nice kind of reflective material. So if you want them to be uh, some kind of a 
Oh. I don't really have a color in mind. Hmm. Alright, let's do what we started with. Let's do the jelly bean and let's do some color like uh, like gray, very gray, like this, right? And we're gonna go to our stand brush and I'm gonna activate MRGB and I'm gonna go to Few Object, which for you guys will be under Color, Few Object. And then I can get, get back to my uh, basic material. And now we have this and uh, we can work with color uh, as long as you have this little brush here on which means uh, colorizer the colorizer it will retain your uh, material and uh, and poly paint information so right now I can work uh, knowing that I have some kind of a jade crystals whoa I mean, I can work not on the jade crystals. There we go. So, from this point on, it will be. Re I will have to be much more careful when I read Dynamesh because I'm starting to do some details that otherwise would be kind of. Uh, kind of lost of the uh, on the when I redynamash it. Like if I, I have this crack, if I redynamash it, as you can see, it kind of gets destroyed. So you know, just be careful. And one more thing, if I go with my uh, clay buildup and I start doing this, it will uh, cut where my object is. Oh, if I want to do this, I'm going to press uh, OT for my transparency and then with ghost mode, it will not cut uh, to where my other objects are. If I do, however, if I do transparency with ghost mode off, oh, I thought it, hmm, perhaps that's new, I don't know. I thought it cut off uh, again, so, all right, and from this point, uh, it's... Well, I can uh, go for um, Sculptures Pro now, and as you can see, it's not the Trim Dynamic, of course, it's not the best example, but if I go to uh, my Damien Standard, I can create very nice details and create geometry. So I can go here, there you go. And if I smooth, I can control the geometry it has. So you can see here my active points count, how it grows because I am kind of a, uh, adding geometry. If I smooth it a lot, I just destroyed it and I uh, tessimated. Not tessimate, tessellate. Tessimation was the thing we looked up earlier. But I'm still not going to do that. Mm. I kind of like. Sculptures Pro, for instance, if I'm doing a character, I just I work with Sculptures Pro when I start doing the the tertiary forms and the pores and wrinkles and all those on his face, a scar if he has. But for now, I'm pretty satisfied with uh, with Dynamesh. I want to create how this is going to work is I'm gonna create a lot more details where my shards are and a lot less details where uh, where nothing happens so when you see the when you see this guy here in game you will be uh, immediately drawn towards uh, towards the shards not that the bright green color won't do this for you but uh you know, just in case. And 
and from here on, some, somewhere from here on, I can start um, trim dynamic it. And perhaps these shards affect, if they are magic, maybe they affect the um, the rock around them. So here they did something to the rock, and this is why it has this kind of uh, bubbly effect. Right? Let's do the top. So, alright. I'm just gonna build a little bit more on the top. Here, okay, see, there you go. Not that much. There we go. Nice. Now I have to be careful not to become a very wobbly. So Oh, uh, a very bubbly here, so I'm gonna kind of destroy some of those in my trim. No. So I have some of those kind of uh, planes here, but not without sacrificing the whole kind of broad, uh, broad strokes style of the object there you go, something like this should work fine I'll leave this one here because I like it I might even kind of announce it a little bit more and this one here as well so I'm gonna Something like this, and then this. Alright, this should work here on the top. Closer and a little smaller size. Then just break those here like that. Nice. And then with Damien's turn, I'm just gonna. And even if I exaggerate a little bit when I dynamite it, it will kind of. Uh, kind of destroyed like this so yeah this looks good all right There we go. I don't want to 
might get some kind of a triangle shape here so let's make sure that happens for us And then I'm just going to smooth walk the Z brush kind of cut with my mask too. Alright, let's go back and see the green clay. It looks kind of cool. Those thing here, this thing here is huge. It has a huge amount of AO and carrot it will have compared to the rest. But I like it. Uh, this one here doesn't have any. This one here looks good. This one is totally totally abandoned by me so let's take care of this next so I'm gonna add a little bit more here and then just fucking go harder on it there you go let's bring those into the plane go. okay I uh, yeah I guess I, I get you guys a lot of um, game rest <laughs> questions but okay so uh, let's see Okay, well, for something like this, I would have those as one uh, object and this as another object inside my 3D asset. So, because maybe when you are done mining it, it can just be like this, you know. And if another player goes there, he sees it and he says, oh, it's mine, God damn it!" And he waits for it to, uh, to respawn. Or you can just make it one object and then um, then once it's mined it just miraculously disappeared. Like uh, I think I think Wolf still has those the uh, World of Warcraft still has this. Uh, they didn't uh, kind of bring destruction, I think, to their uh, ores and their trees and their basically anything. It's just um, it just disappears and responds later. But they're blizzard and uh, well Honestly, they can do whatever they want because they're awesome. Uh, or you can get a destruction. This is uh, that's true as well. Good one, Rosie. Uh, you can get destruction. I think in the engine. If the engine, I don't know if uh, Unreal or Unity have their own destruction system, or you gotta import from elsewhere. I think uh, what I uh, think right away, what I get right away as an idea, you can um, you can bring your you can bring this to Houdini. If you guys use Houdini, if you don't, you should use Houdini. And Houdini has pretty cool uh, destruction system. You can destroy there, and then. I'll bring this destruction inside Unreal. I'm not uh, too much of a programmer or game like I don't understand very well how everything in Unreal works. I just use it uh, so I can preview my models there or and make some very very uh, light, lightweight so to speak uh, things in Unreal. But yeah, so if you destroy it in Houdini, then this animation can go in Unreal, and that way, with each uh, hit of the mine pick or uh, whatever you are using to mine it in the game, you can make it uh, you can make it gets destroyed little by little, which I think is would be a nice uh, kind of a 
I think most of the games have those already. I don't know, I recently played uh, Conan Exiles and it had this thing. This type of thing happening when you when you harvest resources. Most of the survival games I think have this as an effect. Right? There you go, on our little piece. So what I can do now is I can, oh, let's see, let's H polish this, like this, and then H polish this side. Hello, Holmes Rono. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, man. But uh, yeah, hi. Right, we are getting pretty uh, far. So basically, hmm, I'm just looking through different materials. Uh, all right, so let's trim it again one more time. But first, let me get done with all the details here so I don't have to there we go cool this is something I actually wanted to do Yeah, I I actually well I'm like I'm I, I'm happy as well that I'm doing um, organic stuff again, at least for a couple of hours. Uh, but I just enjoy uh, hard surface much more than this, so this is why. Plus, I kind of maybe because of that, I, I'm kind of a little bit better. Uh, not that I'm good at anything but when it comes to um to what your to where my skills supposed skills lies i would say that 
I enjoy a hard surface a little bit more and hard surface enjoys me I guess a little bit more so We'll break all of those with uh, when we get to our details. But for now, I'm gonna leave them like this. We are almost done. Um, Now I am going not to clip but rather trim the bottom because if I clip it I might get some artifacts and I don't want that so I'm gonna clip uh, trim curve to about here and what it does is it slices it it hides it it deletes it and it fills the hole so all I have to do is with dynamash then and we are golden um, Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get this face that it hold it. And I'm going to delete it and fill the hole like with Dynamite because it's slightly different algorithm. There we go. Alright, now we have our uh, our basic block. So I can turn off Dynamite. And we are starting from this point. From here on, we can either subdivide it once, and this way we get uh, we get an even resolution all around. And we can start using the brushes, um, either either our own brushes, either start creating uh, kind of details on our own, or we can use brushes from the internet or brushes that we've created you know whatever your heart desires but I'm gonna stop the stream here so let's find a nice thumbnail shot okay and we can continue from 
I will work uh, some of it offline and then next uh, next Wednesday I think we'll be ready to uh, to do the very very fine details we'll have to do some work on the crystals because those simply won't do uh, and in the meantime you can catch me on YouTube where all my videos go there is a lot of them it's growing to be rather large library of videos and um, and on Friday I'll be streaming from uh, what is it one uh, basically from noon GMT I'm trying to I'm traveling at the moment so I'm tra trying to uh, kind of get my <laughs> my time zones right uh, and uh, from uh, noon GMT to about uh, about two or three hours we'll have a long stream and uh, thank you guys for watching uh, remember to share subscribe check out our watchmore.com streamers they're awesome much better than me and we'll see each other uh, Friday bye bye